Hey, welcome to Mastering Kinda Master. So today I am doing a user-requested tutorial from Nicole Ramos, who says she likes the way I explain things. And if you want to have something explained in the way that I do for you, just put it in the comments and I will try and get to it. What we're doing today is the shake effect. It's a popular effect and Kinda Master handles it a little bit differently because of the way that Kinda Master does layers and clips. And we'll talk about that when we get on the other side. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, ring the bell, and then let's move forward onto the screencast and learn how to do the shake in KineMaster. See you on the other side. To make sure everybody knows what we're talking about, this is a screen capture of a game that I was playing and I added it to KineMaster and now I'm going to add the shake effect when the award comes up. So that shaking was done in KineMaster after I recorded it and now I'm going to show you how I do that. So I've created a project that has my screen capture as my clip in my timeline. Now clips in KineMaster are the first level of the timeline and the thing about clips is they cannot be animated with multiple keyframes, which means you can't do the shake with them. What we do is we want to fast forward to about the point where we're going to start the shake a little bit before it. And what we do is we are going to split our content because we're going to create a layer out of the part that we want to shake. And then we're going to, when the shake ends, we're going to go back to it being a clip. And the reason for this is because clips have things that layers can't do and layers have things that clips can't do, but you want to do it like this. One thought here is that to make sure that your audio is what you want before you start doing the cuts. I am not using the audio in this tutorial, but if you were, you want to make sure the audio is perfect before you start setting the shake up because KineMaster will play the audio through this straight through, but if you start moving the pieces around, then it'll mix it up. So that's just a tip. Now with the part that we're going to do the shake with, we select that middle part and we duplicate his layer and it puts it on top. You'll notice right off the bat that it puts it in a position that is uh, smaller than the size. You can expand that up and you want to get uh, to the point that it is about the same size as the content that you started with. In this case, it doesn't need to be that exact because the next step, we're actually going to scale this up. So as long as it's about correct for your shake, then you are perfectly good with it. Now we're going to do the process of adding keyframes. In case you don't know, keyframes are animation points along the way and they can allow it so that your content can move multiple times, be rescaled, sized, moved, and all of that, and that's where the shake comes from. Here's the important part of the technique. First of all, the very first keyframe, what you want to do is you want to scale your content up a decent amount. The reason for this is the shake will move your content so that the edges will show off the screen. And so you need to have it so there's room to shake. All right. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to put four keyframes in. Now, this is really important because keyframes require motion to come back to a certain place. So the first one that we're going to put in here is we're going to add at the end and you just hit this plus on the end. There's two ways to do a keyframe. If you use this menu and you hit plus that just added a keyframe and you can see your keyframes are every red dot in there okay so now we have the the clip starting and ending at the i'm sorry i said clip the layer starting and ending at the same place and we're ready to go so then it'll return back to being in the game um by itself okay the next thing we do is we add two start at end points of our motion right away is that we add a start point by just moving it forward by a little bit and we start and this is where we're going to start the shake and then we add one close to the last point and that is where we're going to end the shake okay so this basically sets it up so it starts and ends at the same place all right the next step is to stretch out your timeline now you're not making any changes to anything here this just makes it way easier to do because when you're doing the shake you want your times on the shake to be about a tenth of a second in between the different points. And what that means is I would put a point here at uh, 4.8, and that's 4.8 seconds. And then I'd put another one at 4.9 seconds, another one at 5.0 seconds, a tenth of a second, because that creates an actual kind of active shake. If you don't stretch your timeline out, you can't get to these kind of small increments. And if you do it in bigger increments, it just kind of looks like everything's floating 
floating around. So remember that is stretch out your timeline so you can put things at a tenth of a second increment. Now I'm going to start doing this process and now you use your finger to move the content around. I have found that doing it like kind of an X pattern. So I'm going on 4.85 and now I move down and now 4.95 and I move it up across here. Um, 5.05, you can move it. And it doesn't have to be exact, exact time. Don't worry about that. Um, but then move it across here and you can see the red points are being uh, laid in place down there. Now I am going to stop this screencast and I am going to do a sped up version of it. Okay, we've wrapped up adding our keyframes. I want to show you something that happened while I was doing it. It'll probably happen to you. Is if you tap outside of the yellow area or the screen, you'll lose the focus on your content. And then when you select it, you need to remember to go back into the keyframe menu because you can see that the right hand side is not the keyframe menu. Go ahead and click it and then you can start adding keyframes again. Don't try and move it when it's not in the keyframe menu. All right, so now we've got it finished and I'm going to play it through once and we go ahead and there we go it's the effect that we look that we want to but check it out you see that big jump at the end I'm gonna show you how to fix that now what I want to do here is I want to make this last keyframe go more smoothly so it doesn't return to the video with that jump. What I do first is I take my clip and I change it into an alpha opacity of partially transparent. So it's sitting on top of my original content and I can see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my keyframes, go to my keyframe menu on this, go to the last keyframe. And because you're seeing half the thing underneath, what you want to do is you want to resize this so it's roughly the same size on the last keyframe. It doesn't have to be perfectly exact because it just moves through it very quickly. But so I go ahead and now I have that animation and now I turn it back to alpha 100%. And so I'm going to actually watch it real quickly to see if this looks better. And it goes and there's the end and it's much more smooth. And that is the complete effect. I hope, Nicole, that I helped explain that for you well. All right, for Nicole and anybody else who needed the help with the shake effect, hope that made total sense for you. Remember, please like and subscribe and get out there and make some awesome stuff with my favorite video editing mobile application, KineMaster, and I will see you the next time. <laughs>